Hello everyone, uh, today we I should be doing something totally different to what I normally do, uh, this Apple TV, uh, this is a favour for a friend this one, uh, basically he wants to turn it into a Koji box and jailbreak it or something, and he needs a bit more memory because unfortunately these boxes only come maximum 64 gigabit, so I said I'd try and upgrade it to a 256 gigabit. I'm not sure if it's even possible, never done this before, but well, it should be an interesting one. Uh, you need three things for upgrading memory on iPads, iPhones, anything like that. Uh, be able to connect it to iTunes, and also you need the iTunes file, which restore file, and also you need a compatible NAN. And I'll be using the old remote on this, even though it's the newer box. Uh, because the old remote works on it. Unfortunately, he's lost his remote control, but that's not a problem. Yeah, so it should be an interesting one, as I've never done this before. Right, I've set it up on this monitor. I just want to double-check everything works fine. Uh, it all appears to be working fine. Um, it's A1625 model, uh, fourth generation Apple TV, and it's 64 gigabit. And that's what I'm hoping to upgrade in this video. Just doing a quick restore on iTunes before I get started. I may skip ahead on this because it does take some time. Right, I think we're ready to start now. Unfortunately, I was unable to start yesterday, unfortunately. This is now the next day, but I'm going to take off from where I left off yesterday. Uh, I'm going to start by taking it apart. Uh, this process may take some time, so I may skip the video ahead a little bit. Uh, save you having to watch a long process of taking it apart. Right, I've loosened all the clips around the outside. There's like little clips holding this case on. Right, they've all come out now. Um, what have we got here? Five hanging keys. Right, I've sorted out the hanging key screw. Um, so I reckon once I loosen this, hopefully the motherboard should come out after that. I've never done one of these before, so it's all new to me. Right, I finally got the lid off. Um, it appears to have thermal paste on the other side. Unfortunately, looking at it, it does appear to have the older NAND chip on it. Unfortunately, these only go up to 128. Um, I did want to put a 256 gigabit. I'll know more when I get out. I've got two more screws to do. Right, I finally managed to loosen it out. It's quite a tight fit, this. Uh, it doesn't appear to have any connectors on the other side. That's probably why it was hard getting it out. It's got thermal paste on the other side. Uh, obviously, to keep the CPU cool. Uh, that looks like the power unit inside there. Well, let's just, uh, set these aside quickly. Have a look what we've got here. Here we have the Wi-Fi IC. Uh, here's the CPU. Uh, on the other side of the NAND chip, don't appear to have a lot. Just a couple of chips and nothing major. So that should be all right. Um, yeah, I think we're pretty much uh, okay to go ahead with it now. 
I may go ahead and remove this trim around the outside of the NAND chip just to make it a bit easier. Right, um, on this side of the bowl, I'm going to put uh, heat sinks on top of the uh, chips. Just keep the CPU cool and the Wi Fi IC. And I do this by putting uh, copper slices on top of them and then I'll tape over it with full tape. Just keep it cool. <laughs> I'm just going to up the temperature a little bit because it does seem to be absorbing the heat quite easily. I think this is because it's a lot thicker board. Right, I just applied some ready solder to the pads and now I'm going to wick them so they're red, uh, nice and flat for the new chip. Right, uh, this pad in the bottom right corner looks a bit oxidised, so uh, I'm going to spend a bit of extra time with this one. Uh, but I'm really not happy with the way it looks. Um, you tend to find when they're dull looking, uh, they tend to not solder properly, so uh, it's best to spend a bit of extra time with it. Right, I think that's done now. Right, I'm using the old Navi Pro programmer because it is an older NAND chip. Um, you tend to find that uh, this is a better programmer for the older NAND chips than the uh, newer programmers. Uh, not sure why that is, to be honest with you. Unfortunately, it is the old NAND chip, so we can only go up to 128 gigabit. It's still double what was in there, so it's not all bad news, but I was hoping to upgrade it to 256. I'm just making a couple of backups now, and then I'll go ahead and program it. Right, I'm just having a look at the JC Pro programmer. This is the 1000S. Um, unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to use this anyway because 
Even though it reads the NAND chip, it don't allow you to program it without selecting an iPhone or an iPad. And this is an Apple TV, so you wouldn't be able to use this anyway. Right, I'm just programming a 128 gigabit chip. Uh, unfortunately, that's as high as we can go. Um, so it'd yeah, be totally maxed out for what it can. As you can see on this 128 gigabit chip I used, uh, one of the traces are exposed, so I'm just double checking, everything's fine. It does appear to be. Right, I'm going to go ahead and reboil the chip now. Um, I'll put the solder page using the sensor on the bottom. And yeah, we can go ahead. This is the chip quick uh, solder paste. Highly recommended uh, solder paste. Um, best, well, it's what I use anyway. Right, I think that's ready to go ahead and test in. Uh, after testing, I'll give you a better clean up. Right, let's get it all connected up. Uh, I'll probably put it in loosely for now, uh, just for testing purposes. Right, I'm going to connect the power, and then I'm going to connect it to iTunes, do a full restore. Uh, this will acknowledge the new NAND chip, hopefully, fingers crossed. And yeah, go from there. Just get the USB um, port in and get it connected to the computer. For some reason, it's not coming up yet. Um, the light's not on here either. Not sure why this is. Right again. Should have a white light on the front. When I powered it up earlier, I had a light on the front. Right, it, uh, I found out the reason why the light weren't coming on. Uh, these two screws actually have to be in to connect it to the power supply. So, yeah, my own silly fault. I didn't uh, check that. Um, as you can see, uh, the white light's now on it. I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, it's flashing there. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and connect it to iTunes now. I believe the white light flashes when it's in recovery mode. Uh, so as you see the flashing light, I assume it's in uh, recovery mode. Because earlier it was solid white. Well, I've got it connected to iTunes now and I'm restoring it. And as you can see, it's still flashing white. 
and I've got it connected up here. I might fast forward this a little bit because it does take some time to restore. So I'll save you watching it. Right, I think we're done now. It's uh, fully restored. Um, it's come up like that, so I'm going to go ahead and connect it to a monitor now. Right, I have it set up. It's all powered on fine. Uh, this is the moment of truth. Will it activate? Because sometimes it don't activate if you don't have the data programmed properly. Yep, it's activated, so everything appears to be fine. Right, I've gone through the steps, uh, I'll set it up without an iCloud. And there we have it, it's all set up. Uh, it appears to be uh, firing up absolutely fine. Solid white light on the front. And I've still got to put these five screws in. I haven't put them in yet, because I'm still testing it. But it all appears to be fine. Uh, if you look up here, wait for the reveal. Dun dun dun! Look, 128 gigabit, fourth generation. So it's totally maxed out now. Unfortunately, you could only go up to 128 on this model. Um, shame. On the new ones, you can go up to about 500. I've got it all put back together now. So we have a fourth generation, 128 gigabit uh, Apple TV. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more, please subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.